Hi everyone, welcome to Case of Cairo. So if you've been to our practice before, you may have seen some of these books laying around our practice and it is because it's here for patients to read through if you have time. Um, it's essentially a book uh, compiled of summarized research papers, but if you don't like reading, well I've done the hard work for you and I've summarized the summary. <laughs> So the first study I want to talk about is infants delivered by instrument assisted birth have lower cervical range of motion. So basically babies that, who, that weren't born naturally have le less movement in the neck. So the study was published in the Cairo Journal of Australia and it was done as in looks at a practice in Victoria in Australia and it studied 176 babies all under the ages of 112 days. And so it essentially found that babies that were born um, with, via cesarean or with vacuum assistance or forceps, they had less mo neck movement than babies born naturally. In fact, what it actually, the study found was that 75% um, or like three quarters of, ba of the babies studied had less um, ranges of motion in the neck, even if they were born vaginally to, to begin with. Um, but like, why is this so important though? The reason why this is so important is because, well, to be honest, the research hasn't been clearly um, established for babies yet, but we know that in the adult population that if you have less movement through your neck, then it can lead to, um, you know, altered functions in your autonomic uh, nervous system, uh, increased nociception to being more sensitive to pain or even having uh, cortical disaffrontation. Um, and so the really the biggest cause of um, babies having neck lesser neck movement in during birth is because of the force of the actual the process of it. So um, in labor, a baby the force going through a baby's head can be like at rest about 15 newtons, but can work all the way up to about 120 newtons during a um, during a contraction. And and there was another study that also found that uh, in vacuum extractions, when there's like repeated attempts, the uh, the maximum amount of force that can be used is about 452 newtons. But the thing is, the safe range should actually only about be about 216 newtons. So, you know, it's been exceeded about 33% or so. And um, so with this increase in like excessive range, it does mean that the risk of injury therefore will increase. Um, and so at the moment, currently in Australia, about 90% of vaginal deliveries require assistance. And then if you have the rip, if the baby uh, requires forceps, then the risk of injury becomes then four times higher than normal. Or like babies born via um, vacuum extraction, the risk becomes three times higher than normal. So yeah, um, what this study uh, created was um, it cr increased awareness around the forces placed on babies during birth and the resultant reduced range of motion is in around 75% of cases. Although this is a, well, a sample study um, was taken from a chiropractor clinic and it's relatively small, the conclusion is still very valid and it's a fact that like it raises the question, you know, that hopefully future research will answer, you know, what is the result of reduced cervical range of motion in infants?